Welcome back. Um, you ever heard the term junk in, junk out? You've probably heard me say it several times. The cleaner things go into your store, of course, the cleaner they will come out. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, as usual, you know, of course, subscribe, share us with your friends, comment below. Yeah, and please forgive me for the lack of contact uh, this past weekend. I was out Christmas shopping with the family and I had two glorious days of peace and quiet. So, let's move on. Our last video that we did, we did two of them, and we did one on the corn. That's this one. And you'll see that one's finished fermenting, and we need to talk about that. And we did one on the two-row barley, and we need to talk about that one. So we're going to cover both of these at the same time. Now, there's a lot of times I get phone calls, or I'll get messages, or I'll get emails, and it's all, it always revolves around, this only took a week, it, it always revolves around the, oh, and you can still hear every once in a while some residual CO2 pop out. The question of, well, my mash is only fermented for three days and it stopped. What do I do? Or the other one is, George, it's been 12 days and it's still bubbling. Um, you know, a lot of times the question is, well, how, how long should I let it go? And I always try to say, look, I'm not trying to be a smart ass, but until it's done. Um, and there's a bunch of different ways to tell it's done. What do you think the, the, the easiest way? Yeah. A hydrometer. Float a hydrometer in it. Um, another way is when it just quits bubbling. But you'll notice here that, and keep this in mind, um, every maybe minute or so you might get a bubble. Um, what is that? The, uh, uh, most cases, you see, CO2 gets trapped inside here. That's why in wines we degas. It has to get rid of that residual CO2. Uh, as long as you let this sit here for the next couple of weeks, I'll just, every once in a while, I'll get a boop, um, and it's just CO2 finally releasing. Uh, it gets trapped. So that's why we go through the degassing process. And now, the easiest way to degas a mash, believe it, the easiest way is to pour it between two buckets. Uh, you don't have to go through the, a long process. Now, wine's a little bit different, you know, wine's a little bit more finicky. Uh, you got to work with it. Uh, you can stir it up, spin it with a, a drill, with a paddle on the end. I mean, you can do a whole bunch of different things. There's, again, there's a thousand techniques, but the process is still the same. I'm trying to get CO2 out. So, now let's answer the question. Um, the, you, we always say, if you're going to ferment, and you're going to ferment a five-gallon batch, bam. If you're going to ferment a five-gallon batch, okay, uh, when someone asks, I'll say, oh, it'll take seven to ten days. Well, i got to give you a window. Um, I can't tell you it's going to take 6.2 days. Or I, I, you can't get any more accurate than that. It's uh, between seven and ten days. It's an average. So I, the calls I get are, George, it, it's already finished, and it's only been day four. I, I haven't got to day seven yet. Oh, okay, it's, if it's done, it's done. Um, there, there's a bunch of different reasons for it, okay? I'm going to give you the most common, okay? Besides the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything line up. You got everything done. Right. Okay, let's take, take it for granted that we're at the right temperature. Uh, at the, our environment's perfect. We're protecting it. Everything's fine, okay? Um, and you'll notice here that you see my sediment, uh, and that's why we clarify. Uh, there's my sediment there, and here's my sediment on this one. This is the two-row. And this is the corn. Uh, we need to get rid of all of that because we don't want that to go in the still. Now, oh, before we go any further, can you siphon it from here into a still and run it? And the answer is yes. Can you siphon this from here into the still and run it? And the answer is yes. Um, you've got, uh, if that's if you're in a hurry, um, why not take that extra step 
and clarify it. Okay? Now, we'll get a little bit more into clarification in just a sec. Let me show you this. If you have five gallons, okay, and you drop your hydrometer in there, and your hydrometer reads 1.038. Now, you know if you roll that over, your potential alcohol, not alcohol, potential. And what that means is it's 5%. That means that if you put yeast in there and it eats all the available sugars, that's as much as you're going to get. You're not going to get any more. It, it, it's only going to produce that much. And, and again, that's... It's, it's based on gravity, so it's going to be way, way closer than a guess. So if you're reading 1.038, you got 5% alcohol by volume. Of course, 1.076 is 10% alcohol by volume. See, 5%, 10%. 1.110, I'd call that a high gravity is 15%. You know what mine is? My goal is always 1.090 right in here. So that's where my goal is. And then of course you got those diehards that just want to make fuel. You're not making a spirit, you're making fuel. Okay? And that's 1.150. That's 20%. Of, now this is not equal out based on the picture and you know that. But what I wanted to demonstrate here is that all things being equal, <laughs> it will take your yeast probably yeah, three days to eat this, to make this. Three, maybe four days at the most. Um, it will take your yeast a little bit longer because there's more of it to do this. And of course, a little bit longer to do this. Uh, you see why we give you the seven to ten days? And then when you get up in here, uh, this could take two weeks. Uh, it could take, uh, gosh, no, uh, as long, you know, again, temperature's important, um, all those things. So keep that in mind when you're preparing a mash, a wine, uh, you know, the must, uh, or a wart for beer. Keep that in mind that when you're alcohol by volume goal and potential is high, your fermentation time gets a longer. If it's really low, it's going to be shorter. I've had calls where they say, I put it in, in two days it was done. And then I'll ask them, what'd you put in there? And we go through it, and we do a little quick math, and I'll go, oh yeah, well you got like 3% alcohol by volume. They're like, what? Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why, but it's, it's, look, you only had so much fermentable sugars there, so yeah, it, it doesn't take you yeast long to eat that. Okay, now for clarification, why do we clarify? Uh, we clarify because clean in equals clean out. Okay, that's one. Uh, what are the dangers of not doing that? Well, the dangers of not doing that are scorching. You see, you've got all of this and you've got all of this, and if that's in there, of, and especially if you're using one of those stills that has the, the heating portion on the very bottom, you're using propane or you're using a hot plate or, you know, something like that, uh, this stuff will settle again inside the still and then it'll start to scorch. Now, that scorch is just like anything that you put in a pan and start to cook. Uh, if you don't stir it up, try doing it with, uh, like you're making turkey gravy, uh, you know, and, and don't stir it while it's thickening. Uh, the bottom will get real dark brown and turn black on you and you can taste it through the gravy. It's, that's what will happen or could potentially happen. The same thing if you've got a heater element in there um, and some of this starts to move around, it'll attach itself to the heater element and it could scorch. Now is that really critical? Well, if you got a lot of it, yeah. Um, if you don't have a lot of it, don't worry about it. Now, Here's what I would submit to you. If you, you could dump this into a still, are you going to have problems? In my opinion, yes. Because there's no way to dump this without dumping this in there with it. I don't care how careful you are. It's going to start to mix. You're going to upset it. It's going to, it's going to mix. It'll flow right in there. And you know, you're halfway through and you're like, oh, what, I, what the hell? You, and you'll go at it. Then, yeah, problems later.
Okay, uh, there are several different methods, techniques, for clarifying. One of them is, let's use gravity. Okay, Gra let's use gravity to our favor. Um, we just let it sit for two, three weeks. Yep, it'll eventually, it, everything will eventually settle to the bottom and you'll be good to go. If you don't want to wait two or three weeks, there are things that you can do to aid this process along. One of them is, before, it, it, somebody's going to write this in and go, oh, I use bentonite. Bentonite works. Bentonite is nothing more than a really neat clay that you place in there. And what it does is it attaches itself to all those particles. And guess what it does? It settles. And it clarifies. There's another product called Sparkaloid. Sparkaloid's a white powder. And again, you mix it up, pour it in there, and it does the same thing. It attaches itself. As it starts to settle, it grabs stuff on the way down, and it settles it out. That's what it's... It's a flocculent. <laughs> See, using a big word for no, nothing more than settling out solid particulates. You don't want think You want it to be clear. <laughs> now, and there's a... Oh, there's Instaglass. Instaglass is used in a lot of beer brewing, and when you're brewing beer, Instaglass is just... It, it's, um, it's an extract from a... Um, dried fish bladder and that works extremely well and no you, you there, there are no there, there's no taste there's no effect on your mash your wine your beer nothing okay I've even heard people say that if you use clarifier it removes the flavor check your source okay all right uh, one thing and I use this routinely it's called turbo clear Turbo Clear comes in two packs. Uh, whoop, let me turn it right side up for you. Bam, there it is. Uh, it's Kia Sol and Cheetah Sand. Uh, I just happen to know that uh, because of nothing on the pack that's going to tell you which one's which. It's just going to tell you that you got Kia Sol and Cheetah Sand. So you got part A and part B. You pour in part A, just cut the, the end off, the tip, pour it in, give it a little quick stir, let it sit for an hour. Cut this tip off. Pour in part B, give it a little stir, and just let it sit. 24 hours later, boom, crystal clear. That's what this does. Um, this is positively and negatively charged. Opposites attract. And in the, at the same time as they're doing that, and they're coalescing and mixing inside your mixtures, they're grabbing a hold of all that solid particulates, and it all settles out to the bottom. Um, this stuff is probably around two bucks a pack, three bucks a pack. What, and it's good enough for one five-gallon batch or six-gallon batch. It, don't get critical, and that's good. Um, you, there's also another option. You can, I mean, I just went, I got bottles of it. I bought a bottle of Kia Saw and a bottle of Cheetah Sand. So um, it's just to me, it's a little bit more economical. If you're doing this more often, um, just go on Amazon or your local website and. Type in Kiso Sol or Cheeto San. And uh, they're both fining agents. Flocculants. Got a bunch of different words to describe that. So here's what we're going to do. Um, and I'm not even going to, you're not even going to watch this. You've got the explanation necessary. I'm just going to take a hose and remember a technique. Uh, can, do you use an auto siphon? Do you, do you use a, a va the vacuum pump? I'm, what do you do, George? How do you? I'm, I'm going to use a hose, um, and since this is a mash and not a beer, I'll suck on the end of it. You know, you want to be careful when it comes to beer because the environment that you've created is a really good breeding ground, so you don't want to infect that with anything from your mouth. But when it comes to a mash, it's going right into a spill. So I'm going to siphon it from here into another container. And then I'll dump all of the trub uh, for wine. It would be lees. Um, yeah, for beer it's called trub, and for mash, I, I don't know. I guess we call it junk. Uh, I'm gonna dump all of that out, and I'm gonna reintroduce everything. I'll just siphon it right back in, or pour it right back in, degassing at the same time. Mm. Technique. Uh, then I'm going to add my turbo clear to both of them, and then guess what? Within two days, usually within 24 hours, but within 48 hours, 
we're ready to distill. Yep, we've made it. We've made it that far. We've gone from the very beginning in the explanation for everything for this beginner's guide all the way through. Now all we're going to do is clarify, degas, and we're going to put it in the still. And we're going to produce a spirit. Okay. That's all I got for you today. Happy distilling.